Hello guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will learn what a HDL is, when, where and why we use it in the design of an integrated circuit. An integrated circuit is a semiconductor chip where electronic components are mounted and interconnected. You might have seen this structure somewhere in your real life also. Let us see the evolution of integrated circuits in the past few decades. The picture on your screen is the first IC developed by Jack Kilby. When he was a newly joined engineer in Texas Instruments, he used a piece of germanium. With the help of oscilloscope, he demonstrated a continuous running sine wave. In the year 1961, Robert Noyce developed the first monolithic silicon IC, and these two were jointly considered as the first integrated circuits. The picture that you see here is a picture of an IC of the present generation, which has millions and billions of transistors in it. In the year 1965, an American engineer and co-founder of Intel Corporation, Gordon Moore, predicted that the number of transistors in an IC would double every two years. This is famously studied as Moore's law. This graph shows the number of transistors on the Y scale and the year of introduction of that IC on the X axis. As you can see, the plot is very linear and this curve shows the transistor count doubling every two years. This Moore's law is still being observed with many leading IC manufacturing companies, for example, Intel, Qualcomm, Nvidia, etc. What is a hardware description language? As you can see, the number of transistors in an IC is growing enormously. So the designers have moved from manual methods of doing to computer-based design tools called CAD tools. CAD means Computer Aided Design. For the computer to understand, it needs a separate kind of language, as you might know C, C++, etc. So HDL is a language that describes the hardware. HDL stands for Hardware Description Language. So it describes the hardware in a textual form, such that both human and computer can understand it, and the computer can process and read it. In simple words, HDL describes the relation between output and input of an hardware block. For example, th this is an OR gate where the output is R of A or B, the inputs. In a HDL Verilog, you would write it as out equal to A or B in this fashion, which the computer can interpret it. So we will learn about this in the next video. Where do we use HDL? HDL is used in many steps in the design flow of an integrated circuit. So these are some of the things. So we will try to get an idea of what this means in the next few slides. Design entry creates an HDL based description of the functionality that is to be implemented in hardware. Depending on the hardware description language, the description can be in variety of forms. Boolean equation, truth table, a netlist of interconnected gates, or it can be having the information about the interconnections between smaller circuits which lead to a larger circuit. Logic simulation displays the behavior of a digital system through a computer. A simulator interprets the HDL and then generates the output that we can understand. It can be of time ordered sequence of input and output values and other signals that we are interested in or it can be the waveform plot of the signals which we can read. So with the help of logic simulation, we can see if the circuit is functionally correct or no. Simulation detects functional errors in a design without having to physically create and operate a circuit. Errors that are detected during this stage can be corrected by modifying the HDL description that we have given. To simulate a digital system, the design is first described in HDL and then verified by simulation and then it is implemented. Logic synthesis is the process of deriving a list of physical components and their interconnections from the model of a digital system that is described in the HDL. We call the list as netlist. This netlist can be used to fabricate an IC or to lay out a PCB from the hardware counterparts of the gates in the netlist. Timing verification confirms that the fabricated IC will operate at a specified speed because each logic gate flip-flop has some type of non-idealities. A signal transition at the input of a circuit cannot immediately cause a change in the logic value at the output of a circuit. That is because of these non-idealities in the gate of the flip-flop. 
their setup time, hold time, and propagation delay. Clock has clock skip. Timing verification checks each signal path to verify that it is not compromised by the propagation delay. Fault simulation compares the behavior of an ideal circuit with the behavior of a circuit that contains a process induced flaw. In the fabrication, the companies make sure the room is very clean. The dust and other particulates in the atmosphere can cause a circuit to be fabricated with a fault. A circuit with a fault will not have the same functionality as a circuit without fault. The ICs that we have has only edge pins available. That is, we only have access to the inputs and outputs. This is a circuit that shows the full ladder. We, in the IC, we have the access to the inputs and the outputs. We don't have access to the intermediate nodes or the wires. Suppose there is a fault that is induced during the fabrication. So this wire is always stuck at zero or at one. Suppose let's take zero. This wire will be zero irrespective of the inputs that you give at A or B. So the circuit will no longer behave as a full adder. The functionality of circuit itself will change because of the fault at one or the other node in the circuit. So we will find the inputs that reveal the difference between a faulty and a fault free circuit. This whole concept is very deep and is very large. So we will try to cover it in the future videos. In the public domain, we have Verilog and VHDL as the standard approved languages, which are supported and approved by IEEE. V in VHDL stands for very high speed integrated circuits. VHDL is dominantly used in defense systems. It has Verilog is user friendly. Verilog began as a proprietary HDL for Cadence design system. Later on, Cadence transferred the control of Verilog to some institutes and some companies which fall under Open Verilog International. And then it is approved as a HDL by IEEE. Verilog is approved in 1995 and it has three revised versions in 2001, 2005 and 2009. And Verilog is easier to learn and easier to use. So we will try to see some simulations with Verilog in the next video. So in the next video, we will try to cover what a module declaration is, what are keywords and identifiers. We will learn how to write a Verilog code for any combinator circuit or for any Boolean equation. We will try to learn what a test bench is and how to write a simple test bench. So the next video will be available in one or two days. To make sure that you don't miss it, please subscribe. Thank you.